Good morning or good afternoon or good evening. It's Miss Bauer here and today we're going to talk about CPCTC. Now CPCTC is a special type of proof and if we take a look at these first two triangles here it says that triangle hay is congruent to triangle man. So if I look at those two triangles I know that they're congruent because it tells me that they're congruent. Um, I just have to figure out why and remember that we have five options for proving that triangles are congruent and that side angle side 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 angle side angle and angle angle side so I know that they're congruent I see that I have two sets of angles because I have two sets of arcs and I have a side so it's either going to be angle side angle or angle angle side so if it's ASA, remember that the tick should be between the arcs, which it's not, which makes it angle, angle, side. So triangle A is congruent to triangle man by angle, angle, side. So we know that these two triangles are congruent. We just said that they're congruent by angle, angle, side. The question is, what other parts are congruent? Well, if the triangles are congruent, then wouldn't angle H be congruent to angle M? Yes, there's no arcs there, but if the triangles are congruent, then yeah, angle H would be congruent to angle M. And that's CPCTC. CPCTC says that the corresponding parts, for example, angle H and angle M, so that the corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. So CPCTC says that corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. And that's a bit of a mouthful, so I'm not going to say, we don't say every single time corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. We just say CPCTC. Now, CPCTC says that if it's not marked, it's congruent. But first, before you can use CPCTC, you have to prove that the triangles themselves are congruent. And remember, we have five options for that. So side, angle, side, 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 angle, side, angle, 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 side, and HL. And then once we've done that, then the other parts are congruent. So back to these two triangles. Triangle A was congruent to triangle man by angle, angle, side. Therefore, all the other parts are congruent by CPCTC. So what's not marked? Well, angle H is congruent to angle M. It's not marked, but the triangles are congruent, so we know it. Um, I don't see ticks on this side, but HY is congruent too. Remember that our order is important, so HY would go with MN. And then is there any other side that's not marked that we also know is congruent? And that would be EY and AN. So that's CPCTC, that if you prove that the triangles are congruent, then their other parts are congruent as well. So if I take a look at this next picture, I'm going to ask you for a minute to think, how are these triangles congruent? For most of these problems, you know that they are congruent, you just have to figure out how. Well, I see two angles, so two sets of arcs with a tick in between. So the triangles are congruent by angle, side, angle. Now, order is important. I need to be careful here. What would be congruent to triangle cat? C-A-T? Well, that would be R-A-P. We already established that they're congruent by angle, side, angle. Now, what other parts are not marked in these triangles that are also going to be congruent? Well, I don't see any arcs on angle T and angle P, but they're congruent by C-P-C-T-C. If the triangles are congruent, then yeah, angle T is congruent to angle P. Um, I don't see any ticks on CT, but CT would be congruent to RP. And then there's one more side. I'm going to give you a minute to think about it. So CT, RP. What else have I not marked? And that's AT and AP. Now, remember that our order is important. So if you had said TA, you would just have to match TA with PA. And that's what we mean by order, the order that you put those points in. So let's go through and do this in a proofs. And maybe you remember that proofs always, always start with given. 
So I'm not even going to read too much into it. My first reason will always be because it's given to me. And in this particular problem, they gave us two pieces of information. That's that AC is congruent to AR and angle 1 is congruent to angle 2. So I'm just going to write that down. Okay, now I'm going to go back in process. So they gave me some information. I'm trying to prove that an angle is congruent to an angle. Well, let's go back. AC is congruent to AR. And if you remember, congruent sides have ticks. So I'm going to put a tick on AC and I need to put a tick on AR. Okay, they also told me that angle 1 is congruent to angle 2, and angles have arcs, so I'm going to put an arc on angle 1, and I'm going to put an arc on angle 2. And maybe something's going off in your head. I see an X, that's a type of angle. Well, let's read what it says next in our proof. They gave us some guidance here. They said angle CAL, that angle right there, is congruent to angle RAS. Well, hopefully you remember what type of angles are those. Those are vertical angles, and vertical angles are always congruent. So I'm going to put some arcs in there. It's like one of my little freebies. Okay, now we've added a lot of information to our picture. Now the question is, how are these triangles congruent? They have to be in a proof, but how are they congruent? We marked two angles, and we marked a side. So I have two angles. And I have a side. The question is, is it angle side angle? Is the side between the angles? No, that side is on the edge. So the triangles are congruent by angle, angle, side. So I was trying to prove that angle 3 is congruent to angle 4. Well, I just proved that the triangles are congruent by angle, angle, side. Therefore, angle 3 would be congruent to angle 4 by C, P, C, T, C. Corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. I proved that the triangles were congruent, therefore their corresponding parts are congruent. Now, proofs can seem a little bit difficult at first, but proofs have a formula for them. So, proofs are always going to start out with whatever you're given. That's what we start with, whatever we're given. And then after we're given information, then we're typically going to have a freebie. So example, in this case, we had vertical angles. Another popular freebie is reflexive property. Okay, sometimes after our freebies, we have to actually use the given information. So maybe they told us that there was a bisector on a bisector cuts things in half, or they said midpoint and a midpoint cuts things in half. So we would have definition of something and that something could be a bisector, a midpoint, perpendicular. This is the body of our proof. Some people like to swap out steps two and three. It's okay, but it should be in the body of your proof. And after you've done all of that, you should have your picture marked up enough to be able to figure out how the triangles are congruent. So once you've done all of that, you should be able to prove that a triangle is congruent to a triangle, whether that's by side, angle, side, angle, side, angle, one of those options. And then sometimes, sometimes not, we have our fifth step, which is C, P, C, T, C. Sometimes we did triangle proofs the other day. Sometimes they just want you to take it a step further, and that leads us to C, P, C, T, C. So let's take a look at this next one. And I see a lot of letters, that's okay. For now, I'm just going to go ahead and kind of copy it down. So my first reasons are always given. So how do I know this? Because it's given. And we had two givens. So I had this and this. So now I'm just going to copy that second one down. So angle OLN is congruent to angle MNL. Okay, and now I'm going to pause and I'm going to process, which means I'm going to go and I'm going to read and mark on my picture. NLM, if I trace it, NLM, see how it's literally pointing to that angle? That's where I'm going to add my first arc. Okay, NLM is congruent to LNO. Now it's pointing down, so I need to have one other matching arc there. So I took care of that given. Now I'm going to read the next given, O-L-N. 
So O, L, N, well now it's pointing up to that top one. And I already did one arc and one arc, so now I'm gonna switch to two arcs and two arcs. And it goes with M, N, L. So now it's pointing down. I'm gonna put two arcs right there. Okay, so I used my givens. Let's see if we have a freebie in this picture. Maybe you're seeing it, they share this side. What property is it if it's the same thing in both triangles? Well, that's reflexive property. I just need to state what's the side that they share. Well, that's LN, so I'm gonna add a tick and I'm gonna say that LN is congruent to LN by reflexive property. And then I'm gonna look at my picture and see, have I done enough? I don't have any definitions. Have I done enough to prove that the triangles are congruent? And if I look, it says LMN, so that is right. So I go from one arc, no arcs, two arcs, would be congruent to, need to be careful and think about it. So I had one arc, no arcs, two arcs. Well, that would go with one arc, no arcs, two arcs. So that would be N-O-L. And if I asked you how were they congruent, remember that we have five options. So is it side, angle, side, 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 angle, side, angle, or angle, angle, side, or HL? And this would be angle, side, angle. So we just established that our two triangles are congruent. We just proved that. So is angle M congruent to angle O? That's what I'm trying to prove. Well, my triangles are congruent, so yes, angle M is congruent to angle O by C, P, C, T, C. So that's my proof. Now, I'm going to give you a minute to see if you can complete the next one on your own, and then we're going to check back in in the next video. Good luck.